Well, good morning. And it's uh, nice to see you this morning. So, we're going to sing a, a song. Now, there is no introduction. I kind of picked it because I thought it was like elocution. Because the words are all very much enunciated. Or enunciated, or whatever the pronunciation is. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. So let's uh, stand and not sing. Um, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. starts. Let's pray. Father, these are big words, immortal, invisible. But we also thank you that you are a God who invites us to draw near to you. In all your holiness and all your majesty, but to draw near and bring you our praise and our thanks. So help us this morning, through all that's done, to be aware of your nearness and of you speaking to us in this place and on the DVD. So, Father, just watch over as we would ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. And for those that are thinking, it's the internet, not the DVD. So, there we are. A couple of notices. Uh, first of all, Wally found out that, uh, got a call from Kim and Greg to say that Maureen Macklin has had a fall. Uh, she's in LGI at the moment, uh, but she's in good spirits. So she's, that's, that's where she is. So pray for Maureen at the moment. The second thing is that uh, during the month of February, you may be aware that uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York are uh, suggesting that we uh, we pray at six o'clock uh, during the month of February for the pandemic. Uh, so we'll put that out there, and uh, if you want to join in with that, then that'll be splendid. We're going to pray now for the nation, and. Uh, 
I've written down five things. So um, we'll pray for those five. Anything else that comes into your head, uh, bring it to God in prayer. But let's, uh, let's pray for our nation this time. Heavenly Father, the, the nation has been gripped by the over a hundred thousand deaths in the UK caused by this virus. And we just ask, Heavenly Father, that you will comfort those that are mourning. We ask too that for those that are watching on, waiting anxiously because their relatives are in the throes of it, we pray that you will give them your peace and your help, your enabling. Father, we'd also want to pray for the strengthening and support of the health workers and the carers they're exhausted they're tired and we just ask that you will help them to carry on through this and that you will watch over them help them to put things in place that will look after each other Father, we've, we've thought about people uh, rolling out the vaccine. And we're, we're pleased that there's numbers being vaccinated. And we just ask that that would continue. And that people will be kept safe as they go for their vaccination and afterwards. Father, that would be some of the good news with the vaccinations but there's others that are worried because of their jobs that they might not exist after and Father we ask that uh, for people that are anxious that you will just help them give them wisdom in the actions that they take Father we just plead for, for your mercy at this time and then we're in this situation father where there's parents teaching their children and we just ask for much grace and help for some it will be easier than others and for some it will be a battle all the way through but Father, would you watch over these young families in our land, help them to make wise choices. And Father, give the government wisdom in how to react afterwards. So Father, hear our prayers for our nation. We call on you for your grace and your mercy. Because we are short of answers in Jesus name Amen We're going to sing another song Light of the World and then after that we'll have our Bible reading Thank you. 
So this is the this is the Bible reading from Matthew chapter four. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea, along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, I sent Jonathan these words. Um, it's like Connect. If you've watched Connected in the telly. So, looking at the first four words on the way down. Head, torch, search, flood. What's the connection? What connects those four words? Head, torch, search and flood. Light, where? At the end of it, correct. Headlight, head torch, tor torchlight, searchlight, and floodlight. Okay, we'll leave the next one. What about the one at the other side? Moon, mirror, ice caps, cat's eyes. What's the connection there? Sneaked in a few hard ones just to kind of try and make it a bit more interesting. Okay. Reflections. They all reflect light. So the moon reflects it, mirrors reflect it, the ice caps reflect it off so that we don't burn. And cat's eyes reflect the headlights back. Okay. So you're now getting house, weight, Bulb aircraft. Oh, see this. It's worrying if you're in my head, isn't it? Lighthouse, lightweight, light bulb, light aircraft. Sorry about that. Okay. Now the really hard one. Match, Lightning, Unions, Baseball. Oh! Geniuses amongst us. They're all involved with strikes. You strike a match, Lightning strikes, Unions call strikes, Baseball, you have a strike. There you go. So, bit of nonsense just to think about light and uh, various dimensions. We've had some sombre songs. We'll have a cheery song. This little light of mine. And after that, Jeff, you're very welcome. And uh, I'll get out of your way. So let's stand again and not sing, but in our hearts. This little light of mine.
Morning. So here we are, very last day of January, and uh, Christmas seems an awful long time ago to me, and uh, spring seems a long way off to me. Uh, I get up early generally, and whenever I get up, it's dark, and when we have tea, it's dark. And uh, all the promise of spring, with all of the warmth and the growth and the light, that seems a long way off. And we're still in lockdown. This uh, uh, verse that uh, uh, Ian read, which came uh, from originally Isaiah chapter 9, is forever associated with Christmas. And it's been stuck in my head. Uh, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of shadow or on on the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And what I was wanting to do very simply, and it will be simple, is to think about contrasts, uh, sources of darkness, sources of light, people that bring darkness and people that bring light and at the core of the bible a world in the shadow of darkness and a savior that brings light and life and hope i don't think it's controversial at all to say that we are currently living uh, through a season of darkness the whole world And if we were to name the biggest source of darkness that most people would regard as the biggest risk to health that we've ever known in our lifetimes, um, you don't have to guess, do you? Um, I uh, I was buying some stamps in uh, our local post office uh, a few days ago and uh, at the adjoining counter... Uh, was uh, was a man and it was a very short exchange that uh, uh, I was uh, doing literally just buying stamps the guy at the side of me didn't have a mask and was saying to the postmaster I am sick to the back teeth of hearing about Covid I don't want to listen about Covid my wife speaks to me about Covid and I don't listen Um, and uh, the postmaster was very gently saying to him very responsibly You need to listen to your wife. And uh, this guy says, well, I'll have to leave her then. (laughs) Um, And he didn't actually put his fingers in his ears, but it was was kind of like that. Um, Who could have imagined that it's only 12 months ago this weekend that uh, two people in the Staycation Hotel in York uh, were found to have coronavirus and taken to a hospital in Newcastle, an isolation unit. It's only 12 months ago. And the way that we live our lives has changed so radically. Schools shut, shops shut, businesses closed. Uh, We can meet for worship, if you must, but wear a mask and sit far apart and don't even think about singing and don't talk much and don't dawdle. (laughs) In a nation that uh, takes such pride in civil liberties, the unrelenting message uh, has been stay home uh, and uh, save lives and protect the NHS. And it's hardly surprising that lots of people are struggling uh, with uh, how uh, we find ourselves at this moment in time. And uh, I I heard a few days ago uh, a Church of England rector trying to put into words something of the confusion that she's currently experiencing. It's a a lady in London uh, called uh, Lucy Winkett. And uh, my recollection of what she was saying, and this is a kind of a... uh, I think I've captured the essence of what she was saying, but it's not word for word. Uh, She said something like, My emotions are all over the place. Uh, I feel bewilderment and hope all mingling together. 
Sometimes I feel fury at decision makers in power and then soon after I feel sympathy for the awful job of being in charge at such a time as this. I feel frustration with the restrictions but then I feel a gratitude for the restrictions and I feel disorientated and I feel guilt and relief mixed with anxiety. Sometimes I feel energised and an hour later I feel exhausted. And uh, she was describing feeling a sense of grief alongside a sense of comfort. And it raises a kind of, I don't know whether that rings a bell with you, but it does uh, uh, raise a question just in terms of how to stay uh, uh, grounded and sane alongside all that's going on. Uh, what and uh, who do we trust and uh, uh, how do we get through? What are the sources of hope in the face of uh, the virus? Uh, where's the promise of light at the uh, uh, end of what feels like quite a dark period? Um, if you were to ask most people, the answer would be obvious, practically. Uh, the source of hope is in the vaccine rollout and is in continuing to comply with restrictions and reducing the pressure on the NHS and uh, care workers. And uh, uh, I'm sure all of us here uh, would say we are so thankful for the God-given gift of intellect and reason and discovery and science that has allowed uh, the vaccine to be, uh, uh, to be developed uh, and rolled out uh, so quickly. Uh, and so many different vaccines. Um, it really is remarkable. And for all of the manage manufacturing excellence and all of the logistics to kind of get it into the right place, it's fabulous, actually. Um, I'm sure we'd all agree um, that the army of extraordinary people who get up every day and go to work and do extraordinary things. I'm so grateful for, for them. Um, all the essential services that keep going in the face of uh, what we are living through. And uh, overwhelmingly, it's not the rich and the famous people who are keeping things going. For the most part, it's people who we would walk past in the street without a second glance people who do a job that was always demanding uh, but now involves massive demands and huge risks and expectations higher than ever above and beyond uh, the uh, call of what you would normally expect and it's not just NHS and care workers it's all kinds of people um, including volunteers who do amazing things um, Part of the British character, um, it's in, it includes a tendency to poke fun um, when things go wrong. And we are, as a nation generally, uh, quick to criticise people in charge. And uh, as a nation, I think we probably have a, a degree of excellence in terms of sarcasm and uh, often the sneering that goes on. And uh, with the benefit of hindsight, it's so easy. Uh, to be an armchair critic. Who would want to be in government with direct responsibility for all of the issues uh, that we confront, uh, not just as a nation, but as a, as a world? And we could go on and say a number of things about that, and it could be a, 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 a brief sermon in praise of science and human effort. Um, but uh, the thing that's been running around in my head uh, uh, is what's all this got to do with issues of faith and what are some of the themes from the pandemic that should challenge our walk as uh, believers in the Lord Jesus uh, and what are some of the things that remind us of some of the underlying truths of the gospel and what does any of this do with the, uh, have to do with the, uh, the claim uh, of uh, uh, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has, uh, has dawned. Just a few things. Uh, first of all, who to trust. Um, it's easy to make claims about how uh, to find a way through 
in the midst of uh, uh, struggle and, uh, and darkness. And uh, there are uh, many voices offering different solutions. And in our pandemic situation, there have been lots of people offering cures that are totally false. Um, I don't know whether you heard about the holy man in Sri Lanka uh, who came up with the absolute definite and clear answer uh, and cure uh, to uh, COVID-19. And uh, the miracle cure was a, a mixture of honey and nutmeg and coriander and uh, a few additional spices. Um, and uh, the Minister of Health apparently uh, in that country um, publicly drank the cure um, and uh, 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 endorsed uh, the solution that had been found by this holy man. Uh, in the last few days he's been removed from office. Why? Because he got cut of it. Um, there are, I don't, uh, again, I don't know whether you're aware of this, but hundreds of people have died in Iran after taking a definite cure for COVID. And uh, that involved drinking methanol. Um, and uh, that reminded me of a certain ex-president of the United States of America who relatively recently uh, uh, spoke of the potential benefits of bleach um, as a, a, a solution. How do you evaluate what's true and, uh, and what's not? Well, there are some words in scripture that we'll, we, we'll read in a, in a moment that help. Um, but it's who's making the claim, how has it been tested, and what's the result? And uh, over the last uh, four years, uh, until a couple of weeks ago, the now ex-president of the United States of America made all kinds of grandiose claims about himself and his achievements. He'd done more than any other president ever, period. Um, well, the, uh, the words of, uh, of Jesus in, uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 7 uh, uh, helps, uh, where in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 7, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognise them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognise them. It's not what people say or claim or what position they hold. It's who they are and it's how they act and what they bring and what they do. And authenticity and integrity is uh, of great importance. Um, forgive me saying this, but I couldn't help think of my mum um, who said this uh, uh, rarely but with great conviction. I could picture in my mind my mum sidling up to uh, the side of Donald Trump and just whispering into his ear, do you know, Donald, self-praise is no recommendation. <laughs> Secondly, what if there wasn't a vaccine? Where would we be? It's difficult to imagine the pickle we'd be in. We've been facing an infection, we still are facing an infection that we can't see. It has a name but not a face. And in the midst of our everyday lives, if we are careless or caught out, uh, or doing what we want, or ignoring the warnings, ignoring the restrictions, we open ourselves to something that could ruin our health or take our lives. And uh, it's not a fanciful theory, it's a clear and present reality for us now, in 2021. And it is worth remembering that at the centre of the Christian faith is a truth that we also have an enemy that has a name, but not a face, and has been around much longer. And uh, 
the enemy of our souls, sin has managed to infect all of our lives, whether or not we choose to accept that that's true. And there isn't a cure, and there isn't a remedy of ourselves, and it's even more deadly than a pandemic. Without a cure, without a remedy, Psalm 18, I think, captures the, the, uh, the sense. The cords of death entangle me, the torrents of destruction overwhelm me, and the snares of death confront me. And yet, in God, there is hope. The Lord is our rock, our fortress, our deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold who is worthy of praise. And the only vaccine from sin that is available is found in the life and the sacrificial death of Jesus. And that is at the centre of our hope. Because of Jesus, to quote Jeremiah chapter 8, and a hymn, there is a balm in Gilead that can heal the sin-sick soul. Faced with a choice, as far as the rollout of uh, the vaccine is concerned, there's a question to ask, do I take the vaccine or not? In our society, thankfully, there is an accelerating and a widespread acceptance that that's the best route to go and the best thing to do. It's the best defence against becoming seriously ill or worse. And it's alongside social distancing and hand washing and wearing a face mask and good ventilation, etc., etc., etc. However, not everybody agrees. Um, there is a stubborn minority who refuse to accept, refuse to listen, like the man in the post office. There are still some COVID deniers. It's all a hoax. Again, even in the last few days, but every day of the week, the police break up gatherings of people, large gatherings of people. Only a few days ago, in Hyde Park, uh, the police broke up hundreds of people who were having a snowball fight. And uh, two of the organisers of that have been fined £10,000 each. There are the civil libertarians who say, how dare you? How dare you tell me what to do with my life? I will do what I choose. And there are others who are out to spoil. Again, it's only a few days ago that a bomb disposal unit was called to a vaccine manufacturing plant in Wrexham um, because a suspicious package had been sent and somebody has been arrested and remanded in custody because of that. The evidence of the benefits of the vaccine and the continuing precautions, the evidence of that working, albeit slow, is very clear and definite. Regrettably, we are living through a time where biblical truth about the reality of the infection of sin in our lives, the reality of evil, the faithfulness of God and the way of salvation doesn't have widespread acceptance. There are so many people who do not accept sin and the consequences of sin. Salvation, who needs it? The faithfulness of God, what's it got to do with me? So many lives deceived, bewitched and bewildered. The best evidence of biblical truth in 2021, I would say it's twofold. One, it would be the enduring beauty of creation and the consistency but also it's to be found in, in lives given over uh, to the service of God, reflecting something of the character of Jesus who live and march to a different tune uh, to that of a godless society. And just uh, very simply, as we come to a, a, a close, there is a, a real challenge, and it's a challenge that uh, many of us would prefer to avoid, but if all the world sees, if all our community and our families see is believers who are selfish or moody 
or mean-spirited or judgmental or hard-hearted or stingy or standoffish or distant or difficult for no reason what does that communicate about the love of God and the light of the world if they don't see anything of the beauty of Jesus in us what do we what do we offer it's a real challenge and uh, in a month where we rightly celebrate the paying off of a huge loan to actually make this building fit for purpose it's something to celebrate it's wonderful actually uh, the way that that's happened um, without God working in our lives in a way that allows us to reflect something of his glory and his beauty we could end up with uh, a building that's fit for purpose inhabited by a people who were not and that's a that's a big challenge pray God that our legacy uh, is uh, more than more than that let's just pray And just as we uh, pray, some verses from 1 Peter. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are. Now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Amen.